Welcome to Word 2010 Hidden Features. I'm Trainer Laurie. What are hidden features? We'll be discussing some things that you wouldn't normally find by accident. Um, clicking options, find and replace, collaboration, outlining, headline and footers, and other, some, uh, some other key features as well. One thing that I think is critical to know, especially if you're in Windows 7, is that uh, instead of having to try to find Word every time you want to use it, especially if you don't use it very often, um, w instead of find, trying to find it, simply next time you have it open, right click on it, and then you can uh, pin it. Uh, you pin it right here to the taskbar. And once it's, you just pin to the taskbar. You can see once it's pinned, then you can unpin it. But not only that, you'll see all your recent files and you can pin files to this list as well. And when you pin it, you just hover over it and this little push pin appears. When you click the push pin, it now stays put and it will always be available on your right click. Another place to find uh, the recent or the um, pinned files is under the file recent. And you can see these are recently used files, but up here you have the option to pin. In fact, anywhere you pin any of these and it moves it to the top and it stays put. It will always be there as long as you need it. Another option that we have in here is to quickly access this number of documents. You'll find it under Recent, but you can use it anywhere because it puts so many documents, in this case I chose four, always on the File tab. So whether you're on New or Save and Send or Info, uh, you don't have to be on Recent to find your recently used list. And these would be the pinned ones, your uh, most commonly used pinned files. This is something I found by accident because I accidentally double clicked on this line. I didn't know what it was. All I knew was that all my white space was gone and I was afraid it wasn't going to print. It does print. It simply moves it out of the way electronically so that you don't have to jump over that big empty white space as if it were paper. Uh, so it makes it very convenient. And by the way, if you want the white space back, you simply hover over that line and double click again and it will show your white space. Same way with the ribbon. Sometimes you want the ribbon out of the way so that you have more room for your document. And uh, you simply double click on the tab and it will hide the ribbon. Uh, you also, if you look all the way over to the right, you'll see over here another option and that's a carrot. And sometimes it's pointing down, sometimes it's pointing up, but if you click that, it will automatically hide or show the ribbon. So we all know that you uh, click in text to select and that uh, puts your insertion point there. However, that's, that's just one single click, and you probably know that you double click and it will select the word. Are you familiar with triple clicking? Triple clicking and it will select the sentence, but that's really hard to do. I have trouble with it, and I've been doing it for a long time. So uh, here's a tip that's actually better or easier, I think, than triple clicking, and that is to simply click in the margin, anywhere over here in the white space, and when you single click, it will select the whole sentence, so that's pretty handy. You can also double click in the margin and select the whole paragraph. So if you don't like clicking and dragging or if you can't see it all because it's a, uh, you've enlarged it so you can't see the edges, this is a, a good way to do it. You also have the same option with table. I like this. Uh, you can click in the margin it will select the entire row. And if you want to put a row in between these two, now clearly it doesn't matter here because they're all empty, but if you had something important in the first row, something important in the second, but you wanted something in between, you simply come over to the edge and hit enter, and that will insert a new row in your table. Find and replace, and I have to tell you, I was a little frustrated because I'm used to doing find and replace by control F, but when I do control F, it does not show me my typical or uh, classic style of find and replace. It shows this new navigation box. And frankly, I like it now. <laughs> for example, I'm going to look for puzzle and it will show me all the uh, iterations or all the incidents of puzzle throughout the document and these all become hyperlinks. So I simply click it to go there. So I can go to that spot and it's a pretty cool tool. However, if you still like the classic, if you want the, the options that are available to you under classic, then look for this drop down, the one next to the word, and then that will give you the option for advanced find. It's the one with the binoculars. You can also find it up on your home tab. Now remember this one and it gives you uh, the options that you may be used to. You can find it on the home tab under editing and you can find it in the scroll bar. There's tools in your scroll bar. Maybe you've never seen these before but these are all find tools. Tab control. A lot of people go to the ribbon to find tab control but you don't have to. You can do it right here from the ruler. 
and make sure that your ruler is showing. You go to uh, View Ruler to make sure it's showing. But if you click on this tab control, it will change. You can see how it's changed here uh, from an L to an upside down T. So what do those mean? Well, the L means that it's a left uh, justified. That means everything will start from that L position. Uh, all your text will, will be lined up to that. The next one, is the upside down T, means it's center. So I can have left and centered in the same sentence, which is pretty cool. A lot, uh, most of us are using these tools, and you don't have that option. That this is for the entire paragraph, but this gives you multiple options within the same paragraph or the same sentence. And then we have our right justified. That means everything will come be justified on this side, and our uh, decimal justification. So that means everything will be lined up based on the decimal point, which is really handy if you've got currency showing. A big improvement in 2010 is our collaboration options, and under the review tab, you'll see multiple choices for collaboration. I want to share this document with other people so that we can all work on it at the same time. So uh, you can track changes and you can change your tracking options. In fact, you have lots of options there if you want to change the color so that you know who's done what. So um, you've got some options in there for that. Uh, you also have the option to look at the reviewing pane either vertically, which is what this is, or horizontally across the bottom. I like it on the left. And then it will highlight all the changes that have been made. So you can see here that I changed the word puzzle to conundrum, and it says it deleted puzzle, and it inserted conundrum. And so that, that's a nice option, and it will show uh, every person's change. Now, the big thing is when you're all done. <laughs> when you're all done, and I've had people say, it says final, and yet it, I, I can't send it to the customer looking like this. I want, the, uh, I want them all to be hidden. Well, that's when you accept all changes in the document. If you want to look at them side by side, you can compare and look at them. Instead of using the, um, the reviewing pane, uh, you can just compare yourself. Or you can have everybody make their changes and then combine them all, and then it will show all the revisions in one, in one document. Before you're going to share it, especially with the client, you want to look at certain things um, that you might not want them to know about. For example, I've had a lot of people send me a document and tell me that they created it and uh, that they're having trouble with it. But when I look in properties down here to author, it doesn't have their name on it. It's somebody else's name. So clearly they didn't create it. And th this is an easy f uh, thing to find. So you certainly wouldn't want to make that mistake of trying to take credit for somebody else's work. But there's a lot of other things that you can do in properties as well. For example, the title may not be the same thing that you say it as. Sometimes you want to save it with a bunch of numbers so you can find it easily, but this is the one that will actually show, and uh, especially when you're doing a search for it. Same with tags. These are words that you can um, find in, uh, when you're searching, which is very useful. I, I would highly recommend putting some, some words in there so you can find it again later. Also, under File Info, we'll see this Check for Issues option. And under the Check for Issues, it'll say, do you want to inspect the document for hidden properties or personal information? Again, if you're going to share um, documents with clients uh, or the general public, you might want to do that. Make sure that you don't accidentally have some metadata. Uh, you can see different things that might be of, of personal information. Headers and footers, boy, a lot of people ask me about this because it's so frustrating. It's uh, it's one of those hidden things, and how do I, how do I get it? To do what I want. Well, here's the one thing most people want. They want their page numbers to work appropriately. And so uh, you go into header and footer. Now, you have the option for all these built-ins, and I use these now. They are so pretty. Why spend time trying to design something when it's right here? So um, feel free to use them and go online and find more. But if you prefer the classic, hit edit header, and it will give you the header ribbon and the header tab on the ribbon. And uh, you'll have lots of options, including page number. But a lot of people say that's not exactly what I wanted. Uh, for example, I wanted a, a different um, section, a different page number for the first five pages because that's an intro. And then I have the body of the document. I want its own page numbering. And then I have an appendix at the back, and I want that to have a, a separate page numbering. Well, in that case, uh, you have to do a couple more things. One is to go to page layout section breaks. Now, sometimes it's hard to find because if you don't have your uh, your screen full screen or on a large uh, where you can see it, it doesn't say anything, so it may be uh, hard to, to spot. But if you do have it larger, it will say breaks. Now, this is not page breaks, which is under insert, and that's it's a different place. These are not only page breaks, 
because you do have those options and column breaks, but you get section breaks. And this is where you would set your sections. So if you would have your introductory area, and uh, so you can choose when the section occurs, is it going to just go right to the next page, or if it's going to be on the same page, which is kind of awkward and I really don't recommend that, or if it's going to always go to the next even page or the next odd page. Now I can go back to my page numbers, and under Format Page Numbers, I can choose uh, if I want it to continue from previous section or if I want it to start uh, with a new uh, section. And so you can do that here, or you can go back to your headers and footers and do it there. Footnotes. If you are uh, uh, giving a reference or a, uh, uh, citing uh, a source, you then uh, you want to do footnotes. And it seems like it's a little daunting. Just two quick things to remember. One is put your cursor where you want the uh, citation. And then, when you start typing, it automatically goes down to the bottom of the page. So I'm uh, citing a really smart book. And then, when I'm done, it turns into, if I put my cursor there, it turns into like a um, comment. And when I hover over it, it simply says a really smart book, that which is the name that I have down at the bottom. In other words, I get an electronic version of the citation as well as a paper version. So when I print it, it will always be at the bottom, but it's right there at my fingertips if I can't see the bottom of the page. Very handy and easy to do. This is good for if you're designing a document style and you don't want the um, decision maker to be reading the text because then they're going to start reading what you wrote and start editing it and that's not what it's about. So this is random and I've used this in Excel for example, it gives you a random number, but in uh, in Word it gives you random text and it's this text, it's always this text and um, it automatically gives you these three uh, paragraphs. However, if you need more, then just put your numbers in there. The first one is how many paragraphs, and the second one is how many sentences in each paragraph, so that you can have a lot of random text. We all know how to use spell check, I hope. If you see that red squiggly line, that means you should right-click on it, and when you right-click on it, you have the option to uh, change it, and usually we just change it. But please note, there's a couple of other great options in there. One is to add to dictionary. This is critical if it's, for example, a last name. and uh, it, uh, your boss's last name. <laughs> you want to make sure it's added to the dictionary correctly, make sure it's spelled correctly, and then add to dictionary so that you won't ever make a mistake by um, making the wrong name or the wrong spelling of the name. So that's a good idea. Also, you'll notice the option for autocorrect. And autocorrect means that I it will automatically fix it. If I make this mistake all the time, it will automatically fix that error every time I spell it wrong. And I can tell you, one of my biggest uh, mistakes that I do is totty. And I, I put the space in the wrong way. Thumb just goes a little faster or slower than it should. And I really want it to say to the. So I can say replace Tati, and this is my own mistake, and then replace with to the. And then I've added it. So it's it's right down. It, whenever I write Tati, which I don't mean to write, it will automatically fix it. Another great tool, if you're going to be cutting a lot and putting it in some other location. Now this only cuts, it does not copy. Uh, so it's called the spike, and you may or may not have heard of the spike, but it is a place to store a whole bunch of things that you've cut. Now what you can't do is use the delete key. You have to use control F3, and that means it will automatically cut it and put it in the spike. So there's one, two, three sentences that I've cut into the spike, and now when I want to paste it, I use control shift F3, and it will paste all three of them in the order that I took them out. So that's useful, but remember it is cut, not copy, uh, because sometimes I like to use the same text uh, as an intro, and um, this would actually cut it out, so that's not a good thing. However, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to use it right then, you don't want to paste right then, you want to find it later, you have that option as well. It's always going to be found in the Building Blocks Organizer once you've used it. And so what is the Building Blocks Organizer? put it in our Building Blocks Organizer. You can see that's where we'll find the Building Blocks Organizer. For example, uh, this is text that I want to use over and over again. This is one of my boilerplates. That's an old-fashioned term for saying I want to save it over and use it over and over again. So I've highlighted it. I go to Quick Parts. Highlight meaning selected it. Go to Quick Parts and hit Save Selection. Give it a name. And here's a tip. The first four letters become a um, uh, autocomplete. And if you want it to be autocomplete, in other words, if I just type FOL and it automatically puts in whatever text I want, then I must do two things. I need to make sure that the first four letters are not used somewhere else. 
So if I put follow in three times, it won't work. I'll have to get over to the next portion that makes it unique. Also, I must, instead of save it in the normal building blocks dot dot, I need to save it in the normal dot dot. So you'd have to change it down here. And that makes it very convenient if you like the autocomplete, which I do. And then when we go to use it, now I've got a blank page. I go to quick parts and look there. And I can either click here or I can type in the follow and it automatically inserts it. This is so good of a tool. I don't want to have to be digging for it on the ribbon. So I simply right click on the quick parts and say to add it to the quick access toolbar. You can see it's mine is grayed out because I've already done it. It's already up here. I use it all the time. These are keyboard shortcuts that I've been using forever that I thought everybody knew, and then I found out, no, nope, that's not the case. <laughs> so I want to share them with you. Um, the first two are critical if you like to make your, your a font larger. And you can see here that we already have a tool to make font larger. However, it jumps based on what's in the list. For example, between the 8 and 9 is 1 point, between the 12 and 14 is 2 points, and between the 36 and 48 is 12 points. So it's going to jump based on whatever the one size is up to the next size. Sometimes I only want it to insert or increase by one point, and so that's what those do, and it's a wonderful tool. Love it. Use it all the time. Control 1, Control 2, or Control 3. I hope you're using these already, but if your cursor is in a paragraph, it will change the line spacing to one, two, or three lines. There's also a Control 5, and what that does is change your line spacing not to five lines, but to 1.5, which I find very convenient because if I want to write um, text in between, I, could, I have uh, room for it, but it doesn't take up too much um, paper. So that I like using that rather than the two lines. Control Enter and Shift Enter. Uh, Control Enter will create a new page wherever my insertion point is. Uh, usually I put in uh, Enter once to say this is going to be the end of my page, and then Control Enter, it will start my next page. So I don't have to hit Enter, 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 and then have all those um, getting in the way when I decide I don't want them anymore. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Shift Enter will create a new paragraph, and notice I say bullet list. That means if I have a bulleted list and I want to put a line in, and then have another bullet that uh, usually you have to futz around with it and trying to delete and start a, a bullet list again, just hit Shift Enter. It will put in a new line and a new paragraph essentially uh, without the bullet. And then when you hit Enter again, it will create the bullet next bulleted list. Hit Shift F3. This is wonderful. It toggles between three cases, upper, lower, and sentence case. And sentence means the first letters uh, of the sentence only. That's uh, uppercase. However, we do have a tool now in 2010, and it does change you uh, or toggle you through five cases. And then finally, the last tip here is outlining for PowerPoint. I have this document, and I want it to go into PowerPoint, but normally I would have to copy and paste on every slide, and what a pain. Instead, you want to go down to your uh, outlining view down at the bottom, and it turns on the outlining tab up here, and you can change your levels. In other words, I can turn those paragraphs into this, and I'll have a, a plus and minus, and then I can keep going down more levels. And so it turns it into an outline. The nice thing is, is that once I save it as an outline, I can go into PowerPoint, and under New Slide, it will say Slides from Outline. And now it will take each of these plus signs and turn them into its own slide. And the text underneath, one will be the header, and the other will be the bulleted list underneath. And I can tell you that will save you lots of time if you have to change a document into a PowerPoint presentation. Well, that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.